Okay, today on Monkey and Mezzakeen, it is question and answer day, so um, I got a, quite a few questions about how I got the dogs to stop chasing the cat. Um, I'll be straight out honest, I did absolutely nothing but save the dogs from the cat. That's, that's where uh, all my training came from, from not chasing the cat. Um, when I first got Monkey, he was here about two or three days and um, made the mistake of chasing the cat and the cat tore him up. So I had to save Monkey from the cat. And then when I got Mezzakeen, with her being a little bullheaded, it took her a little bit longer. It took her probably about eight days, I think it was, before I had to save her from the cat. So um, the cat pretty much took care of all my training on that part of it. Um, uh, I'll show a couple things like right now I'll show you a, a small little video of what he has done to Tank and I'll flash up a picture of what he did to our uh, Jack Russell that I had and um, I can't show you the picture of what he did to my daughter <laughs> and no my daughter's not a little girl she's a full grown adult so um, but he got her in the ear and yeah, it was, it was a mess. And he also attacked our, uh, dryer repairman when he came to take the dryer to get it serviced and stuff, because that's where I feed him. He was on top of the dryer. So he was pretty ticked off that somebody was messing around <laughs> with his area. And I will have to admit that some people are somewhat afraid of my cat because you just never know when he's going to strike. So, um, uh, if it's a stranger coming into the house, I usually put the cat away. I don't have to worry about the dogs. It's the cat that's the vicious one. And so therefore, um, that's that. So I'll take a pause right here. I'll show you that quick video of uh, Tank submitting to the cat. And then I'll show you the picture of the Jack Russell. And then we'll get back on track. It's quick and easy. Pretty amazing. I picked it all up. I would totally take out the little dog. Really? Yeah, Dinner tastes better when it's homemade, like chicken blanketed in golden breadcrumbs, and pulls some sides with her signature touches. All top is thick homemade gravy because dinner shouldn't. Okay, so anyway, like I said, my cat's a day hole. Um, anyway, to get your pup to stop chasing the cat. Is it, it's going to be a little bit of work because cats are just so chaseable, right? They're like squirrels and stuff. So, um, a lot of the professionals will tell you to do the crate training with the cat or with the dog, you know, but I don't know if I totally agree with that concept of it because sometimes if you do have a cat like mine that's kind of an a hole, it will antagonize that pup in that crate, and then the next thing you know, you're going to have a problem because Hammy would do that to. Uh, Mezzakeen the most when I had her crated so um, when she'd come out she just wanted to get the cat but she knew better than to even try so um, a long lead you know like a six foot lead on your pup they'll tell you to use a lead and then that way you can step on it because I mean Belgians always tell you when they're going to do something I mean it's almost if you've had your Pup for a week, you have already know the signs of when it's about to do something. So therefore, you know, it's kind of easy to step on that lead before it takes off. And you can say stay or leave it or no or at or whatever it is that you're going to use. So those are the two basic ones that most people will tell you to do. And I agree and disagree. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It just depends on the person and it depends on the pup and all that stuff. Um, for me... Uh, as the shortcut king of America, um, I use I use stupid things when I don't want them to do something. You know, um, I'm not a clicker trainer, but I bought a clicker because I was thinking about doing it, and then I went, no, that's just too much work. I always have to carry a stupid clicker and stuff, and it's just a pain in the butt. But um, it works really good to when you see your pup get in that position where it's getting ready to chase. You know, the whole you know you know. So um, you could use your clicker to you know, def deflect the thought for a second and have it check you out and then you can, you know, give the cat a chance to get away or whatnot and stuff like that as you say at or whatever. So, um, I mean, that's one way to do it. So, 
and they're pretty simple. You can carry around with you everywhere. So that way, if your dog's messing up, you can just, ah, you know, or no, whatever you do, leave it. So that's one thing. Um, you can use one of these cheap bottles. No product names here. Anyway, you can use one of these cheap bottles. You can put it with pennies, rocks, marbles, whatever, and just kind of, you know, gets their attention to get them away. And you can do the same thing. No, leave it at. And then always the fell safe is the ball, you know, bounce it in front of them, get it, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, those are the simple shortcut, easy tricks. Um, but this is the best time. If you are going to use that lead, that is the best time to start using your call, your callback or your stays or your leave it's because you have that, that lead there to help keep it away from doing whatever you want to do. So, I mean, that will, the, the lead is probably the best way to go with it. So, um, I don't, I don't agree with the crate eating part of it. I just don't, I don't, I don't think that works whatsoever. So, um, that's, that's my question. That's my answers for that question. I mean, it's all about how you deal with the situation. I would not run after my pup yelling its name and all that other stuff, trying to get it to stop chasing the cat, because that's just going to, that's just going to encourage that chase that much more. So the less excitement you put into that chase, the more the pups shouldn't want to do that, you know, if you know what I mean. I mean, the cat's making the excitement already, but if you start getting excited and running after them, I mean, it becomes a three-way chase and it's just, it's not worth it. So those are my simple shortcut ways. Just a tennis ball, a clicker, a gladly thing, a squeaker toy, anything like that to divert its attention. And yeah, I would probably start off with the lead and go that way and make sure that you're working on that stay, the recall and the leave it's all with that lead on and stuff like that. And it should really help you through all that stuff. And that's my shortcuts. That's my, that's my opinion. It's not a professional opinion. It's not, you know, it's just my opinion on what you can or couldn't do or whatnot. So anyway, hopefully this helps somebody. Um, if worst comes to worst, just go to the pound, go to a cat shelter, find you the meanest cat you can find and bring it home and guaranteed it'll take care of that situation of the pup chasing the cat. So that's all I got for today. Um, as always, have a great day and take care of your pups.